Oh wait, I'm not supposed to be eating these yet. What is binning? What does it mean when you say your GPU chip is binned higher or lower? What does it mean when you have a good binned chip? Well, in this video, we're gonna give you an example and show you a demonstration using the concept of cooking cookies to talk about binning and the silicon lottery. That's right, folks. We're gonna talk about the silicon lottery today. When it comes to the silicon lottery, it's very similar to how cookies get made. We're gonna combine all these ingredients together. We can say this is our silicon, our sand, if you will. We're gonna use the process of baking, which we'll also use as a catch-all for lithography. Lithography is a process of shining light through a template onto the silicon itself. And what that does is it magically creates a chip. It gets much more complicated than that, and it's way more crazy. But in this example, we're just gonna show you how we make cookies and how that relates to the silicon lottery. So when they make your chip on your GPU, your CPU, your camera, whatever it may be, there's actually a giant wafer, or it could be like eight inches, 300 millimeters. I've seen them as big as almost a foot in diameter. On this wafer, they have a whole bunch of chips. There's some theory about it and all that stuff, but basically the chips in the middle of the wafer tend to be better than the chips on the outer edges of the wafer. For example, the chips on the outer edge might become core i3s because they just can't do as well as the chips in the middle. The chips in the middle may be Core i9s, you know, the cream of the crop, the best of the best, but each one of those chips is very slightly different. Now, the foundry or the fabrication place where they make most of our chips, uh, there's a big one in Taiwan called TSMC. It's a humongous factory. There's a lot of equipment there, a lot of, a lot of like cutting edge stuff, and it's a multi-billion dollar facility, all right? There's clean rooms. I mean, the amount of care and effort is needed to make computer chips is just crazy. So what they do, they get the silicon, the glass, and they turn it into an ingot, an ingot of pure or as pure as they can, silicon. With that silicon, they cut it into wafers. And on those wafers, they lay it in a special lithography machine and they put a bunch of layers onto the silicon and etch different things into it. Obviously, this process is extremely precise. Every now and then, you do run into some variation. In fact, every wafer is slightly different than the next wafer, even though it's supposed to be the exact same thing. The cookies are all gonna be slightly different, even though they all came from the same ingredients, the same mix, supposedly, the cookies are gonna have a different varying level of chocolate chips. These premium baking mini chips, these semi-sweet chips, they're gonna have a varying level of that. And we're gonna use that as our bin quality or our silicon lottery. Well, we're just gonna say the more chips it has, the better quality it is, all right? The more chips, get it? Chocolate chips. Okay, sorry. So we just turned all of our ingredients into an ingot of cookie dough here. We got the cookie dough made. So now we're gonna add our chips, which will determine our bin. As you can see, we're adding all the chips into the bowl. Now these chips right here are gonna represent our bin for silicon lottery. The more of these cookie chips get into the cookie, the better the bin of that chip or cookie in this case. And with the magic of editing, this is all gonna be mixed just like that. And just like that, we added our chocolate chips and we mixed everything together. You can clearly see in this bowl, chocolate chips are in the cookie dough and you can see how it is not evenly distributed. Some of the cookies are gonna have more chocolate chips than the other cookies. And those cookies, we're gonna say, are binned higher, as in they're higher quality because they have more chips in them. So now we're gonna do the lithography portion. We're going to make these into balls and then we're gonna put them on our cookie sheet. That's gonna be our lithography part. So we're just gonna put some gloves on and then then we're going to make these into cookie balls. So you can kind of see in the cookie dough, the chocolate chips are dispersed throughout of it. And you can see how some sections clearly have more chocolate chips than others. The reason for this is because in the process of making a computer chip, you get as accurate as you can, but there's always some variation. we got a sheet of dough, which will represent our silicon wafer. So we got our sheet of dough and then our cookie cutter comes out and cuts the cookie shape out. That will represent the pattern that we're using for the lithography process. That is how chips get made. Well, in a more simple sense, of course, it's much more complicated. There's a lot of engineering that goes into it. And of course, these facilities cost billions of dollars. So definitely way more goes into it than I'm representing here. This, my friends, is just a simple representation of how computer chips get made.
Those that are keen-eyed among you might have noticed that I didn't use any butter earlier. Well, I did. I just forgot to include it in that overhead shot. We just did our lithography process and now we got our cookies. Now the baking part. So the chips actually don't get baked. They get like kind of like a stencil. They get stenciled with different layers and different coatings. They're very precise on how they do things. In fact, the precision is so great that the clean rooms, you can't have any dust because one piece of dust, it can mess up an entire chip. And you know, each chip costs a lot of money, especially when you have those wafers. The way they do it, they have a extremely clean room. It's completely clean. You gotta wear a suit and everything. I call it the bunny suit sometimes, but you wear that so you don't get any dust on any of the parts. So now we're we're gonna go into the baking phase and we're gonna see what these look like after they're done baking. Of course, an advanced manufacturer or a foundry like TSMC has much better precise control on their cookies, or in our case, our chips here. In the process of making these cookies, even though I tried my best to be as consistent as possible, each cookie has a different varying level of chips in it. There are just some things that we cannot control, and this is how the silicon lottery works. TSMC or Intel, any of those fabs, any of those fabrications have much precise control. This is just a representation of how the silicon lottery works. As you can see, this cookie right here has quite a few chips in it, but this cookie over here definitely doesn't have as much. Let's say these are all Core i9s, right? So how it would work is like this. Here's all the good cookies right here in the center. The ones right here in the center are the ones that got the best lithography, um, etching, and all that good stuff. So these become the Core i9s. Then the cookies on the edges didn't get the best lithography, so they have less chips, as you can see. Some may be smaller, and they definitely have less chips than the cookies in the middle. So that's just a brief description of how the silicon lottery works. I hope this representation was easy to understand and that it gave you guys a good idea of how it works and what, what it means when we talk about the silicon lottery when it comes to computer chips such as graphics card chips, uh, memory chips, CPU chips, things like that. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment down below in the comments. I'll go ahead and read the description if you're curious about the stuff I used in the studio setup. But I do have Amazon affiliate links down there. It does help support this channel and it helps me make beautiful, delicious cookies. We do have a Discord. It's called Mining Misfits. It's me, Teaspoon Miner, and Chum Change. If you want to go ahead and get joined, it is linked in the description below there. Come join the community. We got a lot of great people there to help you out with all your questions, computer related and otherwise. Also, thanks for watching this video guys and we'll see you in the next one all right so how do these taste oh so delicious mm.